Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be discussing some of the latest rumors and leaks which have surfaced on the internet from popular benchmark databases involving AMD's upcoming Big Navi graphics card, well, one of the Big Navi GPUs to be specific. Our first leak comes from Igor's lab, formerly Tom's Hardware Germany, and they're a fairly reputable site. Igor has a pretty good track record when it comes to information about new hardware, so I recommend checking them out in the links below. Now, Igor has claimed to have received some various benchmark results from the 3DMark software, including the RX 6800 XT, which if you had seen my previous video covering the leaked SKUs, then you'll know that from what we know, the RX 6800 XT is based on the Navi 21 XT chip, which isn't the biggest Navi 21 chip. Now, in Igor's first chart, they were only given the values based on percentages, with the 6800 XT being the reference point and were asked to benchmark their own numbers for the 3080 and 2080 Ti. So in Firestrike Extreme, which is a DX11 benchmark, that's usually a 1440p benchmark, and Firestrike Ultra is the 4K version of the benchmark, so I am a bit confused as to why they have it labeled as 4K. Regardless, here the 6800 XT is a whopping 22% faster than the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, and it has an even bigger 57% lead over the 2080 Ti, which, if these figures are legitimate, makes it seem as though Navi 21 is way way faster than we originally thought it would be because that is a very big margin. However, these performance gains may not translate directly to real-world performance such as gaming, and the other thing I will add is that in this benchmark, Navi 10 RX 5700 XT already performed exceptionally well, punching above its weight. If you just go on 3DMark's website and take a look at the results, the average score for the 5700 XT in Fire Strike Extreme is 13,170, and the average score for the RTX 2070 Super is 12,323, so that's a difference of 7% in favor of AMD, and that margin is bigger at 11% for the 4K version. But if you guys look at actual gaming benchmarks, then you'll see that for the most part, it's the RTX 2070 Super which comes out ahead. Steve over at Hardware Unboxed and TechSpot did a great 2020 gaming benchmarks video comparing these two graphics cards, and he found at 1440p, the 5700 XT was about 9% slower on average. So just something to keep in mind when it comes to AMD and 3 d Mark benchmarks. Moving on, and the second benchmark included was Time Spy Extreme, which used the DX12 API, and this one does run at the 4K resolution. And here the 6800 XT only leads by a mere 3% margin, and is just 19% ahead of the 2080 Ti. So not as big of a margin as we saw in the Fire Strike Extreme benchmark, however the fact that we're seeing a win here does bode well for the 6800 XT. And remember, these results could be from an early engineering sample, running lower clocks, running early drivers, so there could be some room for improvement here. The last benchmark they included was 3 d Mark Port Royal, which runs on the DirectX 12 API and is a ray tracing benchmark. This is actually a very important benchmark because it shows us how AMD's first DXR capable GPUs will be able to perform and how they stack up against Nvidia's offering. The reason why this is crucial is because, like it or not, ray tracing will be the way forward. More and more games are starting to implement ray tracing, so ensuring their GPUs can perform competently and are a viable alternative to NVIDIA is essential for AMD. Otherwise, they'll only be pleasing the crowd that only cares about traditional rasterization performance. With this benchmark, we're seeing some pretty good results. The RTX 3080 is approximately 22% faster than the RX 6800 XT when it comes to ray tracing performance, and we're seeing the RX 6800 XT running about 3.5% faster than the 2080 Ti. What I'll say about this is that I'm not surprised or you know, won't be surprised if it turns out that RDNA 2 is slower than NVIDIA's amp here at ray tracing, but will at least be a bit better than Turing. For AMD's first generation of ray tracing GPUs, I'd still consider this a pretty good implementation for their first attempt. Now, RDNA 2's approach to ray tracing will be considerably different than how NVIDIA approaches ray tracing with dedicated RT cores, where AMD will be using more of a hybrid approach, leveraging some of the TMUs and shader modules, and uses some of that shader hardware to execute a few of those ray tracing steps. And this will be an interesting approach because, as you guys know, when ray tracing is enabled, you still have traditional rasterization involved, and we still have to wait and see how overall performance is affected by this kind of implementation. But like I said, if they can get performance to be at least better than Turing, then it'll be good enough. Also, let's not forget that this implementation could become better over time, as the next-gen consoles are using similar hardware configurations and do also support ray tracing, where developers will automatically be optimizing for RDNA 2, which should help facilitate performance on the desktop. 
Now moving on, and our next few benchmark leaks come from CapFrameX's official Twitter account. Now, if you didn't know, CapFrameX is a very good tool for benchmarking games. I have used their software to conduct gaming benchmarks and analyze results. It's a really good tool for that kind of stuff, so if you're interested, definitely check them out. Now first, they mentioned to have received some results from the Firestrike Ultra benchmark, including Big Navi. Now initially, they don't specify which Big Navi GPU it is, whether it's Navi 21 XT, XTX, or XL. Here, we're looking at a difference of around 8%, which which isn't as large as the margins we saw from Igor's results, but like I said, this could be the lowest Navi 21 GPU for all we know, which could be very impressive if even that chip manages to best an RTX 3080. However, afterwards, they do clarify that this GPU was in fact the RX 6800 XT, so that would mean a faster Navi 21 XTX, the RX 6900 XT, could be quite a bit faster. But that's not all, they finally followed up with saying that they got updated results where the RX 6800 XT is scoring around 12,800 points, which then does beat out the 3080 by 21%, and then that does line up with what we saw from Igor. This is also very intriguing and does make me very excited because the 6800 XT is also beating out the RTX 3090, but by a small margin. Though what makes this all the more interesting would be the fact that this isn't even the biggest Navi 21 GPU. This is the second tier model, and that would mean that the 6900 XT Navi 21 XTX would be much further ahead than the 3090, maybe 14,000 points? I don't know. While this does get my hopes up and makes me want to believe that AMD will be very competitive, I'm still going to remain a bit skeptical because because like I said, these are just synthetic benchmarks, they are very good at utilizing the GPU at its full potential, and also AMD GPUs do perform exceptionally well in this benchmark. Now what we can do is get further validation for these results by checking another source. On Twitter, Yuko Yoshida, who is a known hardware leaker, posted some of the results from 3 d Mark's benchmarks, which they had received including the Navi 21 XT GPU. Harukaze had put these results in a nice chart for us, comparing them to the RTX 30 series GPUs, and yeah, the margins here also line up with what we saw from Igor and CapFrameX's results. What also adds a bit of assurance to these results is that Copite and Patrick do also claim to have received some messages, which have the same results. Now this could all just come from one source spreading their information to all of these guys and for all we know it could be false and that could be why we're seeing all these outlets post similar results. However, when you have all these different sources claiming to have similar results then it does add quite a bit of credence to the numbers being legitimate. So the information we're seeing here does make AMD's RX 6000 series seem promising and that they will be quite competitive against Nvidia's RTX 30 series GPUs. At least that should be the case in regards to traditional rasterization performance. Performance. In terms of ray tracing performance, it's something I want to see tested out in various games, various engines, in order to be convinced. But if the RX 6800 XT can go toe to toe against the RTX 3080, and that the RX 6900 XT can do the same to the RTX 3090, that is, then we'll be looking at a very competitive scene in the high end and enthusiast market. And this is the kind of competition I have been longing for since a very long time, that is. It'll be interesting to see how the Radeon Technologies group handles this, and if they do manage to pull this off, then it'll be like their Ryzen moment. The last time we had something like this was back when AMD had released Hawaii and gave Nvidia's GTX 780 and the Titan a good run for their money. Except this time it looks like AMD will have the edge in terms of efficiency, but who knows, we have seen AMD crank up the power usage on their cards to the limit to get as much performance out of them as they could. Overall though, the consumers are going to be the biggest winners here, as they will have a lot of great options to choose from depending on their needs. But definitely keep your eyes peeled, I feel like we're definitely going to start seeing some more benchmarks and leaks coming out, and I do hope that we start seeing some actual gaming results, um, because from what AMD showed us, they did look good, but I also want to see some third-party validation for those results, and, you know, if for the fact that, you know, they weren't cherry-picked or anything, and if we will see AMD's RX 6000 GPUs be competitive against the RTX 30 series, the biggest concern for me would be obviously price. Um, that could either make or break the product, but I, I'm hoping AMD isn't, uh, gonna get the performance, isn't gonna let the performance get to their heads, and they will actually, you know, price them a bit humbly, and, you know, give NVIDIA a good run for their money, and hopefully start a price war with them. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.